our body communicates infections by raising our temperature. Likewise, the oral mucosa responds to disturbances by developing red or white lesions, alerting us to a potential problem. The white appearance of the oral mucosa can arise from several factors. Increased keratin production by a process called hyperkeratosis. Abnormal thickening of the stratum spinosum called acanthosis. Intra and extracellular fluid accumulation within the epithelium. Microbes, particularly fungi, can produce whitish pseudomembranes. These loosely attached membranes comprise of sloughed epithelial cells, fungal mycelium, and neutrophils. Let us see how red and white lesions are classified according to Burkitt's 12th edition. They can be categorized as allergic reactions, infectious disease, toxic reactions, reactions to mechanical trauma, immunopathologic diseases, pre-malignant lesions, other red and white lesions. The following mnemonic will help in remembering these categories. An Indian trip O. Let us list out a few lesions under each category. The first category of allergic reactions include lichenoid contact reactions and reactions to dentifrice and chlorhexidine. The next category of infectious diseases include candidiasis and hairy leukoplakia. Pop quiz. Moving on to a few toxic reactions. We have reactions to smokeless tobacco and smoker's palate. A reaction to mechanical trauma is Moschicatio baccarum. Moving on to immunopathologic diseases, these are oral lichen planus, drug-induced lichenoid reactions, lichenoid reactions of graft versus host disease, lupus erythematosus, the next category of pre-malignant lesions include leukoplakia, erythroplakia, and oral submucous fibrosis. And other red and white lesions include benign migratory glossitis, leukedema, white sponge nevus, hairy tongue. The oral mucosa can turn red due to two main factors. When the number of epithelial cells decreases, called epithelial atrophy, and increased vascularization through either dilation of existing blood vessels or the growth of new ones. Let us now discuss a few characteristic features of lupus erythematosus, white sponge nevus, benign migratory glossitis, and smoker's palate. To begin with, what is lupus erythematosus? It is an autoimmune disease where the body's immune system mistakenly attacks its own healthy tissues. The two main types are discoid lupus erythematosus and systemic lupus erythematosus. Discoid lupus erythematosus affects only the skin and oral mucous membrane, whereas systemic lupus erythematosus involves multiple organs, including the muscles, joints, kidneys, brain, lungs, heart, blood vessels, and digestive system. The American College of Rheumatology, ACR, has established criteria for diagnosing systemic lupus erythematosus, SLE. A diagnosis of SLE is considered if an individual meets four or more of the following criteria. Malar rash, discoid lesions, photosensitivity, oral ulcers, non-erosive arthritis of two joints or more, cirrhositis, renal disorder, neurologic disorders such as seizures or psychosis, hematologic disorders like hemolytic anemia, leukopenia, lymphopenia or thrombocytopenia, immunologic disorder, oral lesions in systemic and discoid lupus erythematosus 
share striking similarities in appearance and underlying cellular makeup. The classic presentation involves radiating white striae along with an erythematous area. These lesions most commonly affect the gingiva, buccal mucosa, tongue, and palate. However, the palate can also show predominantly red patches without the characteristic white striae. Now let us take a look at a rare inherited condition called white sponge nevus. Clinically, it appears as a white, irregular, elevated surface that may develop fissures or plaque. The most common location for this lesion is the buccal mucosa. The next red and white lesion is benign migratory glossitis, also known as geographic tongue or erythema migrans. This lesion is an inflammatory condition affecting the dorsum and margins of the tongue. It comes and goes in flare-ups and remission periods. The typical appearance is a slightly elevated border that can be white, yellow or grey. It migrates from one location to another, leaving behind an erythematous area which reflects the atrophy of filiform papillae. The border disappears after a while and the erythematous area heals. While mostly asymptomatic, some people experience a burning sensation. The last lesion we will discuss is the smoker's palate, also known as nicotine stomatitis. This condition affects people who heavily consume cigarettes, pipe tobacco, or engage in reverse smoking. Smoker's palate develops initially as erythematous irritation on the palatal mucosa. This then turns white due to hyperkeratosis. Small red dots appear on the white area, which are the openings of minor salivary glands. Pop quiz. To learn more about individual red and white lesions, please follow our videos of leukoplakia, lichen planus, lichenoid reaction, contact stomatitis, luke edema, morsicatio buccarum, candidiasis, and oral submucous fibrosis. We have now come to the end of this video. Hope you had fun learning with us. Think out of the box. Explore more such videos on our website.